Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing this dog tag graphic here inside of Photoshop Elements. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. When you subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos. And take a look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements. It's the best way to learn this program. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, let's get to it. This dog tag graphic uses the Elements Plus plugin to help us get this text just right. Let me bring that up for you. There it is. You'll find this at elementsplus.net right there. Easy to find. It's a very inexpensive plugin. Costs about $12. You need to get a new version for each version of Photoshop that you use. But again, it's a cheap plugin and does just an amazing amount of stuff. You can see all of the different things you can do here with this Elements Plus plugin. Okay, so we'll be using that as part of the process. Let's go ahead now and start off with a brand new file. I'll just close this one down. Let's choose Save and then File New. And I'll be using the standard default Photoshop Elements size right there, which is a width of 6, a height of 4, and a resolution of 300. Choose OK. And there we go. There's our new file. We'll start this whole thing off by putting in some guidelines. You need your rulers showing and up here at view and make sure that rulers is checked right here and then just grab a ruler and pull straight down and this would be a horizontal middle guideline right there if it doesn't snap right to the middle go up here to view and come down to snap to and make sure that snap to guides layers document balance all that stuff is checked let's now bring in one from the left hand side same thing it should snap right to the middle there it is and let's just divide these areas in half as well so I'll pull one down here this doesn't need to be exact it's not going to snap just make it so it's about the middle just kind of visually eyeball that and get it about in the middle of those areas. And that gives us a rectangle in the middle in here from these guidelines. We'll use that as our basic reference guide when we're making our basic dog tag shape. Okay, for the shape, come over here to the shape tool right here. And then use this option here. It's the rounded rectangle tool. Set the radius to 250 pixels. You can leave the color at black. That's just fine. And then come up here to this line and come just a little ways outside, about right over here. And then pull and drag and come down to that bottom guide there and put it about the same distance out on the right hand side. And that is the basic dog tag shape right in there. We'll leave the guides on just for a little bit. We'll be using those again in just a bit. But I can hide them at this point. So view and let's just uncheck guides. Just gets those out of the way temporarily. Okay, now let's fill this with red. So go over here and just click on the foreground color, click in the middle someplace and pull to the upper right hand corner. It makes it a nice bright red. You can actually use any color you want as long as it's not black for this. Okay, paint bucket and then just fill that. Let's now go up to the layer menu and layer style right here, style settings. Come down and check stroke right here. It should be set at outside. The color should be black right here and then set the size at six. And choose OK. And you should see a little thin black line around the outside just like that. OK, now go up here where it says Shape 1. Right click and Simplify Layer. That converts it from being a shape layer into just a standard bitmap graphic. OK, now grab the magic wand, click in the red area or whatever color you have in here, and then just hit the Delete button just to delete that and then deselect. That's why you put red in there or any color you wanted so that we could make that outline and then delete that inside easily. If I hide the white background, you see we now have just this shape out here outlining an open space. Okay, now we can bring in our text for this one. Put your colors back to their foreground background color right there, little button default foreground background color. Go up to the text button right here. And I have mine set at using Calibri regular. It's a pretty standard type. It's a good chance you have this, but Helvetica would also work. Aerial would also work. Any of these standard typefaces work out just fine. I have my point size set here at 20. And then just click up in here someplace. We'll adjust the position in just a little bit. Now set your cap locks on for this one. And then type in your last name and first initial. I'll go over just a few spaces in here and I'll put in Oneg, just kind of a standard blood type right there. And then any number you want to have in here, I'm just going to put in zeros. Any number you want, hit the enter again. Now on standard dog tags, let's get that correct. There we go. And then below that, 
there would be a religious affiliation. This can be anything you want. You know, any information here can be any information you want. This is just kind of a standard layout for a standard military style dog tag. But again, any information you want is just fine. Okay, at this point, we're going to adjust the type using that Elements Plus plugin. So make sure you're still in your type layer up here. Come down to Effects. If you have your Elements Plus installed, it should be the top option up here. And then come down here where it says Text. Click on that. This brings up the text dialog box. And right here where it says Tracking, set this to 200. And then choose OK. It's just going to spread things out a little bit. If it's too much, you can then come in and just kind of reposition things. I think I'll just knock off those two extra zeros out there. I went a little bit too far on that. There we are. And that looks fine. Okay, just basically center that right into the page, into the area in here. Leave space over here. We'll be putting a circle here in just a second. There's the basic text for that. And if you're using Photoshop Elements 2020 or future versions, you can use the tracking setting that's inside of the text options instead of using Elements Plus for that one step. Like this, now go ahead and put our dot in here. Now for this, let's bring back up our guidelines. So view, check guides, here we are. Put the dot right there at that intersection of those. So let's go back over to our shapes, come down to the ellipse right down here, and then set this at fixed size, set it from center, and then type in 0.2 by 0.2 and then put your cursor right over those lines, then just tap, and it'll draw that 0.2 by 0.2 inch dot right there. You can then hide the guides again. Okay, there is the basic information we need to create that embossed effect. We're going to go back here to the layers. Now at this point, I like to save these layers just in case I want to change something in the future. So I'll select all three of those layers, right click on a name here, and then duplicate layers. Choose OK. When you have two copies, I'll just hide the bottom copy. Again, those are just my safeties, just in case I want to go back and make adjustments. I can go back several steps this way very easily. Now, in these top ones up here, we need to simplify these layers. The bottom ones are already simplified. Let's simplify this layer where it says Shape 2 Copy. Right-click and Simplify Layer. Same thing on the text layer. Right-click on the name and Simplify Layer. We'll now merge these three layers together. So hold the Shift key down and select them all at the same time. Right-click and then merge layers right there. Okay, so all this stuff is now just on one layer at this point. Okay, we'll now begin setting up for the coloration of our dog tag. Come back down to the bottom layer here. Let's make a new layer above that layer. Let's change our foreground color, and then just set this at all A's. And that's six A's, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just a, a medium light gray right there. It could be caps or lowercase, doesn't matter and down here. Choose OK and then fill this layer with that gray. So paint bucket and fill, and there we go. Now, make a duplicate of this layer, right click and duplicate layer, choose OK, and then take this and drag this above everything else. Put it clear to the top, that puts it above all of our text layers. It just hide that just for a second. Come down to this layer here. This is, I'm, I'm kind of calling this the text layer. I'm just going to just rename this. There we are. We're now going to apply an effect onto this layer. Come back down to Effects, we're back to our Elements Plus, and you want this one right here, this little color squares, click on that. This is the Styles dialog box. Come down where it says Bevel and Emboss right here and check that. Change the style here to Emboss. There we go. Change the size to 15. And come down here where it says Gloss Contour. Change the Gloss Contour to Half Round right there. And that gives us our basic kind of embossed effect as if it's been punched into a sheet of something or other. So there we go. Now this is basically the same thing as the layer styles that we have under the layer menu, except we have a lot more options in here. Okay, choose OK. There we go. It gives us that basic embossed effect. Now the coloration is a bit wrong on this one. As you can see, we need to change the coloration slightly. Let's go back to our layers. And that's why we have this layer up here. But first, before we do that, on this text layer, right click and duplicate that layer. Choose OK. And just leave that layer right there. What that does is it actually makes us far more visible. Let me just show and hide that. You can see the effect right there. It just makes everything more contrasty. So that's those two layers. Make sure you're on your top layer up here. Show this gray layer again. Click up here, right click and come down to create clipping mask. 
what that does is it takes this layer and puts it inside of the text on this layer and it helps to blend the colors in together. And now we have a nice looking embossed effect. Okay, at this point we can begin to work on the textures in here. Now come down to our background gray layer right here and put a new layer above this layer. So new layer right there. Make sure your foreground background colors are black and white like that. And then fill this layer with black. So paint bucket, click any place in here, fills that with black. Now go up to either of the two text layers, doesn't matter which one. Grab the magic wand and click outside here. That selects the outside. Let's invert this, go up to select, come down to inverse. And that selects just the inside area here. Go back up to select, come down to modify and expand. And expand that by eight pixels right there. Choose OK. And that makes it just a hair larger than our dog tag. We can now use that back on this layer here, it says layer two, and use that to make a new layer mask right there. And there we go. So that now puts that layer, that blackness, inside of just the dog tag. Now click on the left hand side, or double click, make sure you see that light blue outline on the left hand side right there. We'll now be putting a filter onto this. Go up to filter, come down to render and lens flare. And in here, you want to have the brightness at 114. You want to have the lens type as a top one that's a 50 to 300 millimeter zoom. And then take the pointer right here and put it just outside the top right corner. So just kind of a bright white, get it just past that bright white. We're still seeing a bit of that lightness up there. So kind of like that, just outside the top right hand corner. And choose OK. Looks kind of strange right now, but it's going to make sense in just a little bit. We're now going to apply a blend mode onto this and actually invert this with a blend mode. So up here to normal, come down to exclusion, and that kind of inverts that, gives us a color negative effect. I'm doing this kind of trick here just to give us some random colorization onto this, and it looks more realistic with this one step. And you'll see again how that works further down in this process. Now move up to the top layer up here, make a new layer above this layer. There we are. And then fill this layer with black. Same thing, paint bucket, click outside someplace, fills the whole layer with black, just like that. Let's now put an effect on this one. So go up to filter, come down to render, and this time fibers. And I have mine set here at three, there we are, and at 64, right there. So three and 64, choose okay, and we get this kind of an effect. Now use the control T keyboard shortcut, Brings up our control handles, and if you come just outside of one of these, you can see right over here, right hand side, and then grab it right there and pull this around until it kind of is like, like this kind of up and down where it's coming in from the right hand side and down a bit to the left hand side. It looks like my degrees right down there are about 76, 75, and there somewhere is fine. So kind of like that for your angle. And then choose OK. Doesn't have to be exact on this one. Obviously, it's blocking everything else in the background, so we need to bring our layer mask up, come down to this layer right here, hold the Alt key down, and then drag that straight up. That copies that layer mask up onto this layer. So we now have our layer mask copied up here. Now we need to blend this into everything else underneath. So click on the left-hand side, open up the blend modes, and come down to Soft Light, and that blends that into everything underneath. And so we're beginning to build up our textures in here. Okay, let's make a new layer above this layer. New layer, just like that at the top again. Come back and fill that one with black as well. There we are, fill it with black. This time go back up to the filter, come down to filter gallery. And this time open the sketch section up right here and choose the graphic pin. Set the stroke length to 15 and the light dark balance to 24. And then choose OK, the stroke direction is right diagonal, which is the top option. Choose OK. And that gives us this kind of a thing in here. We'll be using this to just have texture on that. Again, we need to blend this in. So go up here to the blend modes, come down to darken, and that just adds the dark parts of that underneath. And then we need to kind of clean this up a little bit in here and also make it a bit less obvious. So come down to the layer just below, hold the Alt key down, drag that layer mask up. That brings that layer mask up here, copies the layer mask up, click on that layer, and then change the opacity to 24%. So you have just a little bit of texturing going on in there as well. Now come back down to the bottom gray layer here, hold the Alt key down, grab the layer mask from just above, pull that straight down. That adds a layer mask onto that layer. 
and then hide the background layer and you should see the dog tag sitting here on a clear background. Okay, so far so good. Now go back up to the very top layer up here and then using a special keyboard shortcut, it's the Control Shift Alt keys, hold all those down, then tap on the E key. What that does is it merges all those visible layers together into one new layer at the top. You can now hide everything else and make sure that's working. You should see the same layer here, just double click on that so you can double check, that looks fine. We can show the background white layer again. We'll come back and fix that in just a moment. Let's now punch a hole over here inside this little spot. So let's take the zoom key here. I'm going to zoom in on that one spot. There it is. And let's bring our guidelines back up again. View and bring our guides back up. You can see your guides right here. Grab the elliptical marquee tool. I have the feathering set at zero and it's set at new. Come in with your cursor, here it is, little crosshair, put that right on top of those two guidelines. Click right there, hold the button down, begin to pull out a little bit, hold the shift key down that makes it a circle, hold the alt key down as well, and it makes it a circle being drawn from that center point. Now pull that out until you're just at the edge of where that little bevel is happening right there. And now we can just erase that piece out, grab the eraser, just erase that out, there we go, and then select, deselect, puts a hole right there. Okay, so now go back to our fit screen. That's taken care of. Let's now do our background. We can hide those guidelines via this uncheck guides right there. Hide the guidelines. Let's hide this one layer just for a bit. Come down to the background layer. And I'm going to be filling this with a tan color. Go to your foreground background colors here. And down here in the little hexadecimal spot right down there, change that so it says BFB480 and choose, okay, just kind of a military tan. Use a paint bucket and fill that. Now go up here to the lasso tool, and come down over here someplace, down about a quarter of the way, and just make a squiggly line around like that. Go outside, come up here a ways, and then a squiggly line up around here, and then outside, outside to get back to the starting point. So make this just a big squiggly thing up in here. It doesn't need to be exact or anything at all, just a big squiggle. Go back over here to our colors, now change the colors. New one in here, this is going to be 63755C. So 63755C. This is a bit of an olive drab color. And then fill that selection right there. And then deselect. Grab that lasso again. And we'll be doing kind of a shape in here. It's up here someplace. Again, just squiggle it around a little bit. Doesn't need to be anything very specific. A bit like that. And then we'll fill this with a brown. Back to our foreground colors. Change the number here to 876640. Just kind of a nice medium brown. Grab the paint bucket. Click over here, fills that. Click in the middle, fills that. Click up here and it fills that. And then deselect. So kind of reminiscent of a camouflage thing. And then show your dog tag again. There it is. Now go back up to the top layer up here. Make a new layer above this layer. There we go. And we'll be filling this layer with a gradient. Change your foreground background colors back to the normal again. Just like that, there we go. Go up here to the gradient tool and click on the gradient. Set this at the first one here. This is foreground and background, choose okay. And it should look like that. And then click where it says reverse. So it looks like this. And then choose the second option here. It's this one that says radial. Choose that option. Come just outside the upper right hand corner over here and then pull down to just outside the lower left hand corner and it will look like that. Now hide this layer and come down here to the dog tag layer and then using the magic wand click outside, doesn't matter where that selects the whole outside area here. Come down here to the options and make sure it says add right there and then click inside our new hole right here in new circle. So you have the outside and that circle selected. Now go up to select and inverse so now just the dog tag area is selected without that hole. Let's show our new gradient layer, go back to the gradient layer, and then click that layer mask button. And that gives us a layer mask now which matches that dog tag with the gradient inside. Let's now change the blend mode here and come down to overlay. And that puts that on top of that underneath dog tag. If I show and hide that, you see how that's kind of changing the lighting on that right in there. Okay, now select that top layer and then hold the control key down and the layer just underneath. We're now going to merge these two layers together. So right click and come down to merge layers. Now it still shows just the gradient, just hide and show that again. It will give you the right thumbnail up there. Okay, that takes care of that whole bit. 
We're now going to be adding a layer effect, a layer style onto this. So go up to layer, come down to layer style, style settings, and we'll be doing a drop shadow. Now what you want on your drop shadow in here is you want to change the lighting angle to 63 and then change the size to 10, change the distance to 16, and bring the opacity up to 70% and choose OK. And that's a nice drop shadow which matches the lighting on this whole thing. Now take this layer and make a duplicate. So right click where the name is and choose duplicate layer and OK. We're going to have two stacked on top. Come down to the bottom one right here. Use the Control T keyboard shortcut. Brings up our control handles. Come just outside a corner and give it a little bit of a twist like that. And then choose OK. Back to the Move tool. And then we can move that around in behind. And watch the hole right over here. I want this to just be showing the hole just a little bit. I want to see some of the background and some of that in behind. And then pull it down enough so I can begin to see some of the text right down here. And it's kind of at an angle, kind of like that. It does need to again be perfect, but you know, about in here someplace looks pretty good. And there you go. There's the embossed effect dog tags. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And to really learn how to use Photoshop elements, take a look at my complete training course. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.